Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. I think I'm audible. Uh, we will wait for more 10 minutes as we are expecting more participants to join the webinar. I'm repeating that we are waiting for 10 more minutes. Thank you for your patience.
Okay, uh, so let's start with the webinar. First of all, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this emerging technology webinar on prepare to us application modernization. Myself, Samita, your host for this webinar. So, talking about our event sponsor, our synergetic, le synergetic. synergetic learning is India's most distinguished. Learning company in IT technology. We are ready with our top class learning solutions that can be made to fit every requirement in every sector across every industry around the globe. Our expansive screen phase solutions includes onboarding solutions, reskilling solutions, certification solutions, certification plus add on solution, cloud adoption solution. Architecting solution, practice playbook solution, latest technology training solution, emerging technology training solution, and content development solution. Today's webinar is organized by ETC community and sponsored by Synergetic and Microsoft. Our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technology. To connect with us, you just need to follow our meetup groups, which is an emerging technology community for all. You just need to install the meetup app on your phone and follow our community. So you will be updated about our future email, meetup, webinars, and workshops. Then the code of conduct that all you need to follow. Please note that you can't take screenshot of the presentation and can't do screen recording. If you need the recording, simply subscribe to our YouTube channel. The YouTube channel link will be posted in the chat box. And then agenda for the webinar. As you can see on the screen, you will learn the following topics ahead in the webinar. Today's speaker for the webinar is Mr. Makran Bur. He is an MCT and currently working as a practice head in Synergetic. Our next web ETT webinar is on conceptual Azure condom for enterprise solution, which is on 29th of April from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Registration link will be provided in the chat box. Also follow us on our social media platform for daily updates regarding webinar, workshops, and more. That's all from my side. Over to you, Makran, sir. Thank you all for listening. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Samita. You may audible, Samita? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Yes. So good evening, everyone. Uh, so my name is Makrand, and uh, I'm going to uh, uh, conduct this session on uh, uh, prepare for uh, application uh, modernization. Okay, so let me um, share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? My screen is uh, you know, uh, properly it must be visible to you. Or... Yes, sir, it's visible. Yeah, thank you. So, as mentioned uh, by Samita, my name is Makrand. Uh, I'm having around uh, 15 plus uh, years of teaching plus development experience. Um, and I'm an MCT, you know, I'm certified. Uh, Azure a DevOps professional, okay, as well as uh, you know, I have completed my EZ204 uh, and 104 certifications. Okay, I'm Azure um, developer and Azure um, certified administrator. Along with that, uh, I am the practice head for uh, Java technology. And uh, you know, I'm conducting a training currently, you know, uh, into uh, cloud, which is Azure. Azure related cloud. Uh, then uh, 
I am involved in the in Java technology trainings also, and as well as uh, open source uh, technologies also. Okay. So uh, that is about uh, you know, me. And let's see, you know, okay, because uh, application modernization, this uh, word you might be hearing, you know, okay, uh, because this is uh, quite, uh, you know, uh, buzzword in the you know current market. Okay, so we are going to touch upon these, uh, you know, point. Okay. So I'll, I'll specify what is uh, modernization in general first, you know, and then uh, from that, uh, you know, I will take it ahead. Uh, and I'm planning to, uh, uh, okay, uh, show you one uh, demo, you know, uh, but if time permits, I'll show you that demo. You know? Okay, uh, otherwise, uh, okay, uh, we are not going to uh, do that demo. Okay, we will do, uh, understand conceptually. Okay, uh, this session. So, what is modernization in general? You know, forget about uh, application modernization. I just you know, we will talk about uh, what is modernization. Okay. So, modernization, you know, uh, uh, specify the advancement. Okay. So modernization symbolizes uh, the advancement. Okay. Advancement means what? Uh, you know? Okay. So it's a uh, you know moving forward for a positive sense. Okay. And um, we can think uh, you know of this word modernization uh, in our day to day word uh, also. Uh, so most of your, you know, uh, maybe uh, parents uh, might be, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe living in the uh, you know, village area, okay. Or uh, of course, my parents are also, you know, okay, uh, uh, still living in the village area, okay. So where I've seen, you know, okay, uh, during my childhood, uh, you know, I've seen you know, my mother used to cook, uh, you know, okay, the food, uh, you know. Uh, uh, she used to burn a uh, wood and you know okay on on that uh, she used to cook a food okay but uh, society has modernized you know? so since then you know society has modernized so nowadays you know okay people are uh, you know not using you know that uh, you know uh, burning the wood and you know they are cooking the food they are not using that you know? okay there are you know sophisticated uh, you know gas you know which will be provided so in the form of cylinder and cylinder will be you know, okay. Uh, I can uh, look uh, on one click of a lighter. You know, uh, I will be switching on the gas and okay, I will be start cooking my food. Okay, so understand what you know. Okay, so what we have discussed now. So in terms of a society, you know, society has modernized and society will modernize in the future also. You know, okay. So in the positive sense, right? but that has to be in a positive sense. Okay. So if we apply you know, the same modernization concept, and it is not a new word, it is very old word. Okay. Modernization is something that is not new word. Right? Okay. So what we used to see, you know, okay, we have to apply this modernization, you know, word. In our application, in our you know, okay, application modernization, okay. So that application modernization, okay, is the thing which we are going to see today. So what we used to develop an application till now, uh, maybe you know, okay, uh, that application might be a uh, monolith application. Or past few year, you might be included in the microservices application. Okay, but most of the legacy application, you know, are still in the you know monolith. Okay, so where you are having UI layer, you know, the so business layer, you know, data access layer will be included as a part of one application. Okay. 
So that is included as a part of one application, and uh, you know, okay, it will be maintained, okay, um, in in that one single application only. Okay. okay, so that uh, usually developed in the in, okay the layered you know architecture or what we called as uh, you know okay n tier architecture or you know okay n layer architecture, okay. I'll just show you what I'm talking about. So you can think of uh, this diagram. Okay, so where your presentation layer, you know, uh, will be communicating you know, with the uh, Business service layer, and there might be what uh, you know. Okay, uh, web server. You know, web server is trying to communicate with the app server, and app server will ultimately will be communicating with the database. Okay, whatever be the data which is coming from you know database, which is going to give it to the you know uh, the app server where my REST API or you know, okay, some kind of a. Uh, Web API will be deployed, you know, and that uh, will give the response back to the, you know, okay, web server, okay, and web server will give it back to the, you know, okay, uh, the browser. Okay, so this is typically uh, a layered, layered application what we can see. Okay, and if you if you just look at uh, this layered application. Uh, you know, there are you know, uh, few benefits also. You know, okay. Uh, so if you if you just look at this layered architecture, you know, okay. So if you look at that web layer, you know that will be uh, act as uh, usually you know my uh, presentation layer. Okay. So presentation layer, you know, okay, uh, will not go and communicate uh, with the database directly. You know, there has to be some rule. Okay. So my presentation layer will be communicating with the you know web API layer or whatever be the layer which is existing in this you know so that uh, you know web uh, web server will communicate to the you know okay the web API and web API will get the data from a uh, backend you know, okay and uh, will give it uh, you know, to the database or sorry will give it to the you know uh, web server and it is responsibility of a web server to you know present it uh, to the uh, uh, to the end user. Okay, you know so projects are typically you know aligned to a uh, you know particular uh, tier. Okay, so you know uh, in this um, you know, in this approach, uh, uh, whenever you are doing a testing, you know okay testing is going to you know. Um, uh, maybe uh, you know, okay, will be attached to uh, one particular tier, you know. Okay, so I will be doing the testing of a web tier. I'll be doing the testing of a web API, you know. So usually, you know, testing will be um, you know, okay, um, will be tied to a particular layer. Okay, so 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 over here, you know, tires. Okay, so what are these? These are called as a tires. You know, so tires provides, uh, you know, okay, or uh, our layers, you know, provide, you know, abstraction. For example, presentation tire, you know, okay, will not go and, you know, or communicate uh, with, with your database layer, as I said earlier, you know, okay. So typically, layers will be interact with the existent layer only, okay. And, you know, we can think, think of, no? Okay. So now think of the problems. You know? Okay. So we can think of the one of the problem. You know? Okay. Uh, so if change request is you know okay um, come into the show. Okay. So incorporating that change request is going to be a lot of you know uh, painful. Okay. So you know okay. So incorporating that uh, you know change request uh, you know okay and uh, taking it to the you know production it is going to take a lot of you know uh, time okay 
so this you know okay can be uh, you know okay challenging you know, okay uh, in day to day uh, changing uh, you know scenario where our business requirement are you know, changing okay if i discuss about one more problem you know with this kind of uh, you know architecture um, we used to follow a waterfall model you know, okay for creating you know uh, okay this uh, monolith application we used to follow what waterfall model you know? so in waterfall model um, if you just look at you know uh, the design phase you know after that you know requirement analysis phase and design phase then coding phase and testing phase okay and then uh, you know okay uh, implementation phase you know, okay will follow only once okay so once the you know product is deployed you know okay then uh, if any change request you know is which is you know uh, coming you know customer is asking for any kind of a changes you know in the application so that incorporating that change you know is going to be a uh, lot of difficult in this kind of a scenario okay second issue second issue which is also very very uh, you know important uh, you know okay so scaling you know of uh, such application is uh, not a easy task you know? okay because uh, uh, you know okay if we look at the old days okay uh, when we create a monolith application we used to deploy that uh, you know uh, on uh, server okay which is uh, you know on premise server okay and uh, okay. one of the uh, you no know, downside of uh, any on premise resources is that scaling you know okay of that resource will take lot of effort you know okay so scaling is going to be you know lot of challenging you know you can think of you know, so i am originally having you know one you know okay uh, you know web server one you know api server api server is giving that uh, you know uh, request to the database you know and whatever data you know okay we are returning it will return to the api server you know it will return it back to the web server and we give it back to the you know end user but you assume that okay so you know uh, in future or in after some time after developing this application the popularity of that application you know uh, has uh, increased uh, you know immensely you know so earlier you used to uh, uh, have a workload of you know around maybe uh, okay uh, maybe 100 user uh, you know okay a uh, 100 simultaneous user were you know accessing your application you know but now the popularity has increased you know okay so because of that uh, you know okay uh, there might be uh, maybe thousands of user who are who, who may be accessing the application you know simultaneously okay or you know okay so there might be some peak scenario you know okay so for example uh, some kind of a festival scenario you know okay where your uh, load on the application you know will be uh, you know okay Uh, very high, okay. But uh, you know there are some slack seasons, you know, okay, where your load of the application is very negligible, okay. So you know, okay. So in such cases, you know, okay. So managing, you know, the you know, okay, the scaling on premise is going to be you know very challenging, okay. So if I just think of you know. Uh, the peak scenario only and i have created uh, multiple web servers multiple app servers i have run them behind the load balancer you know okay so if you know peak season is for maybe for 15 days uh, you know out of uh, 365 days or maybe 30 days out of 6 365 days you know okay so you know remaining you know months you know okay your resources will be in this case your resources will be under utilized okay so if you are upfront created you know these resources 
okay so most of the time you know okay your resources will be under utilized you know because uh, you know okay in a year only one month uh, you will have you know okay that expected load okay so where your full utilization can be utilized of these servers you know okay but uh, you know okay if you leave that one one month you know okay the remaining 11 month uh, you know you will be you know okay running these resources under utilized you know but you will have to you know okay pay the upfront money also Okay, so there are you know few challenges you know in this kind of a deployment you know and where we used to deploy you know okay um you know, okay our um you know uh, maybe on on premise uh, you know, uh, server we might be deploying monolithic application or some kind of a service oriented architecture you know okay application also okay so. So these are from you know these are some of the you know uh, uh, what do you say shortfall you know okay so these are some of the shortfall you can uh, you can understand uh, from uh, for, from the you know old approach okay where we used to deploy our application in the on premise you know okay where we used to you know create my application you know okay. Like for example, a monolithic application. Okay. So, so I'll just discuss. You know, okay. Uh, first, okay. What are the benefits of uh, you know, okay, uh, moving uh, towards a cloud? Okay. So, application modernization means what? Uh, you know, okay. Most important role uh, which will be played by you know a cloud. Okay. So in application modernization, okay, most important role will be played by a cloud. Okay. So what are the benefits of uh, you know, okay uh, of using a cloud in the application modernization? Okay. So you can see. The first benefit is, uh, okay, uh, we can optimize the cost. Okay. So, as I said, you know, there are, you know, various factors, you know, in, in the optimizing a cost. Okay. So, let's think of, you know, okay, I'm giving you uh, two scenarios. Okay, let's think of the first scenario. Let's think of your you know, okay, setting up, uh, you know, uh, startup. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, okay. So you're setting up a startup, uh, you know, okay. And uh, you want to create some kind of, uh, you know, okay, um, the application, you know, okay. And that application will be used by you know, the entire world, you know, okay. But setting up, you know, okay, that application, okay. Uh, will require some kind of uh, upfront cost that we need to invest in the some physical servers, you know. So I need to buy, I need to procure, you know. Okay, some physical servers, you know. Okay, so so buying those physical servers and running, you know, on the on-premise, uh, you know. Okay, uh, you know. Okay, on-premise, uh, you know, okay, uh, uh, the data center, you know. Okay, so it takes a lot of upfront cost. Setting up on-premise data center, you know, it does take, it certainly will take, you know, upfront cost, you know, okay. So you think of, you know, uh, you are being a startup, you know, okay. So most of the startup, uh, you know, okay, are not having, you know, a sufficient fund, to you know, spend upfront on these uh, investment. Okay. So upfront, you know, okay, uh, cost, you know, okay, it is, it is you know, not going to, uh, you know, okay, it's, uh, for, for me as a startup, I'm not going to bear that cost. Okay. So rather than spending, 
you know, upfront money on setting up my data center. Okay, so I will just go and okay, okay. So rather than setting up, you know, okay, these uh, money on upfront data center. So setting up my data center. So for example, I'm just you know setting up a few uh, servers you know, over here. Okay. So this server you need to run somewhere, you know. Okay, so you have to hire a uh, you know a renter place or you need to buy a uh, you know okay place, you know, okay. So that is also uh, you know cost uh, yeah, invoice. You need to uh, maintain these servers, you know, okay. You have to hire some engineers to maintain these server, you know, okay. You have to you know uh, just uh, you know uh, uh, maintain a uh, power source, you know, 25 by 7, you know, cooling 24 by 7, you know, okay. So there are a lot of costs which are involved in setting up a data center. Okay. So what cloud you know offers you, you know, okay. So it is not necessary to, you know, you being a startup, it is not necessary for you to set up uh, you know a data center. Okay. So cloud you know offers okay. Okay. Cloud offers, you know, okay, some regions, you know, okay, and uh, in that particular region, you know, okay, whatever, uh, you know, region I wish to, you know, uh, select for creating my resources, you know, so I can just go and choose those region and I can deploy my resources, required resources, you know. So, for example, you know, I need you know, two server, so rather than, you know, okay, uh, setting up those server on the on premise, you know, okay. So I can just go and set up those server, you know. Okay. Okay. Those server on the cloud. Okay. So, so over here you do not, you know, have to pay. Okay. You do not have to pay. Okay. The upfront money. Okay. And upfront money spent is called as a capital expenditure. You know, so I don't have to pay, you know, a capital expenditure. You know, okay, but I have to pay, you know, what I'm using. So the amount of services, you know, I'm using, you know, okay. So that will be charged to you. Okay. So I want to optimize a cost. You know, okay. So that could be one, you know, situation. You know, okay. That is that could be, you know, one. You know, uh, benefit one advantage you're getting okay uh you know from moving from on premise to the okay cloud okay now this is one scenario where you know company is setting up a new uh, you know okay uh company is starting new and you know uh, they are trying to set up a new server you know but what if you know, okay, the company is already, you know, established company, okay, and company is running, you know, already a big data center, they are maintaining that big data center, you know, okay, so that could be the second scenario, you know, okay, and, you know, so a lot of time, you, know, you will see whatever be the uh, data centers you are maintaining, no, you know, okay, so those data centers, Will be having a bigger server, you know, very big server, you know, and that will be, you know, designed uh, to think, uh, you know, okay, uh, maybe highest uh, load, you know, okay, maybe uh, worst scenario, you know, in worst scenario, you know, if uh, one lakh, uh, you know, uh, request will come to the server, you know, then my should be my server should be, you know, okay, uh, capable enough to handle those load, you know, okay, so. The server has designed, you know, in such a way that, you know, okay, uh, maybe uh, to, to handle the worst scenario, okay. But most of the time you will find, you know, okay, those servers are underutilized. You know? Most of the time those servers are underutilized, you know, okay. So there, you know, you can see over here a couple of spike during the year, you know, okay. But most of the time, you know, most of the year, you know, it will be underutilized. 
so you will be you know okay um no uh, uh wasting your resources only okay by uh, by doing this but if you go to the cloud you know okay so it will provide you you know uh, the by default you know, scalability of course i have to uh, define those those rule you know but it does provide a scalability scalability you know okay so i can go and you know uh, uh, do a scale out i can go and do a scale uh, you know okay up you know i can go and manage um, horizontal scaling or vertical scaling you know okay so scaling is the important uh, you know factor you know okay uh, which will be provided by the cloud you know okay so which your application you know if you're modernizing your application on the cloud you know so you're getting that benefit also okay uh, then any any uh, any point we uh, you like to discuss on this till here hello any question Okay. Uh, then uh, you know. Okay, building uh, resilience and security. You know? So what is that building resilience and security? You know? Okay. So um, you know. Uh, so resilience is the core uh, you know, tenant of a Azure trusted cloud commitment. You know. Okay. So where um, you know. Uh, uh one of the benefit uh, you know of uh, using a cloud uh, you will get is high availability you know and because of that high availability you know okay so you will you know get uh, you know okay most of the resilience you know okay so by using you know okay the concept called as uh, you know azure regions okay so there are you know okay more than 60 azure regions you know okay currently that microsoft is you know uh, okay as per the microsoft official documentation okay there are more than 60 plus regions azure regions okay uh, that is uh, you know okay uh, you know uh, connected with the fiber uh, cable okay and 130 uh, you no know, uh, uh, maybe 130 uh, miles of uh, sorry 130 uh, 130 kilo uh, sorry 130 uh, miles of you know okay that uh, distance it is covering okay so this uh, this fiber cables are connected so every regions are connected with the you know okay solid fiber cable so so you you are going to find you know three regions in the india you know okay west india south india and uh, central india you know but so wherever you want to you know deploy your resource you know okay you can you know the azure will give you a choice you know, okay to deploy your resource okay so so you are having a lot of flexibility if you are using you know okay azure if you are using any kind of a cloud you know so you are having a lot of flexibility so you are going to get a flexibility resilience building resilience okay and the concept of a high availability you know okay so can be implemented there is a concept called as you know region pair you know so you know so that concept will help you you know your service from the region level failure okay there is something called as you know availability zone you know which will help you you know okay from a data center level failure okay so it will ultimately you know okay uh, um, design you know um, 
by thinking that high availability so you can uh, access your resource you no know, okay throughout uh, you know uh, 24 by 7 okay so i'll just uh, talk about that region because this I hope uh, you are able to see uh, the whiteboard in front of you. So I just talk about these regions. Okay. So you are having okay one region. Okay, and there is another region over here you are having. So, so for example, you know, okay, the region, one of the region, one of the region which is present as east us okay and we have one more region which is paired with east us you know so this is this is called as region pair okay so every region you know okay in the world okay is paired with another region and what is region by the way Region is a, you know, uh, in the Azure terminology, what is region? Region is a physical uh, geographical area. You know? So where, uh, you know, okay, um, uh, where uh, Microsoft has their own data centers. You know? Okay, so in these region, Microsoft is maintaining their own data centers. <coughs> Now, if you just look at every region, will have okay the availability zone. Okay, and if availability zone supported, you know, then you will find you know three available zone. Okay, okay. But by the way, uh, availability zone is not supported by all region, but if it is supported, you will find three availability zone. Okay, one availability zone will have one or more data centers. So let's say this is my zone one, zone two. <laughs> okay, and over here also same thing. And you know, every availability zone, you know, okay, will contain one or more data center. And what is one data center? Uh, typically, one data center will be, you know, okay, uh, my one physical, uh, you know, uh, premises where you you will find, you know, uh, you know, uh, very big, uh, you know, uh, servers. Okay, so I'll just show you that uh, you know image of Microsoft Data Center also. Okay, so typically every zone will have will consist of resource. Okay, uh, the maybe one or more data center. Typically more than one data center, but it can contain one or many data data center in a zone. And now, whatever be the resource, you know, okay, it will be created. It will be created in the one, you know, okay, uh, data center. It will be either created in one of the data center, which is available, okay, in the East US. So while creating your resource, you have to choose what, in which region you want to create the resource. Okay. So for example, you know, I've just created the resource in this region. Okay, I just created a resource in this region. You know, okay, and if I just go and create my region, oh, sorry, uh, if I just go and create another resource, you know, okay, in this, you know, okay, zone, okay, then, then this kind of a, you know, okay, um, you know, uh, if if I create a this kind of a resource, you know, but of course I have to pay. Uh, 
for multiple resource, but paying a multiple resource, I can bear, you know, okay, but that will save us or that will guarantee us, you know, okay. So in case your one data center goes down, you know, okay, then you are having, you know, okay, another copy with you, okay, which you can, you know, work with. Okay, so your service will not go down, okay, if your entire data center goes down. Okay, so what, what if, you know, okay, the, uh, the company, uh, you are maintaining the server, you know, okay, uh, there is electricity, you know, okay, um, so let's say uh, there is no electricity, you know, okay, in an entire day. Of course, you will be maintaining uh, your own generators and uh, everything. Okay, but I'm just thinking, you know, okay, a worst scenario. So, so if you're, you know, okay, uh, for one day, you know, no electricity, okay, then uh, you're you're going to lose what one day of business. Okay, so in this case, you know, if you're just creating, you know, this kind of a, you know, thing then this can save you from a data center level failure. You know, okay. So zones will help you from a data center level failure. You know, so if you're creating a replica of your resource in the another region, you know, okay. So then it will save you from, you know, okay. The region level failure. Okay. And that option is available with the cloud. You know that option. If you want to do it in the on-premise, you, know, you know, okay, it's not possible that option. Okay. So, so in case of a disaster recovery, you know, okay, so region pair, you know, okay, will help you. You know, so where uh, if you are having, uh, you know, okay, um, so once in a blue moon, let's say, uh, you know, okay, you are having. Uh, uh, maybe earthquake, you know, okay, or uh, maybe uh, any natural uh, disaster or human induced disaster, you know, okay. Then, if one region goes down, okay, then you are having one more region, you know, okay, where your service will be available. Okay, so all those benefits are provided to me, you know, by the cloud. Okay, so. If you are moving your application on the cloud, you know, okay, and that if you are modernizing your application, you know, okay, or let me use one more word if you are migrating your application onto the cloud, okay, so then you are going to get these benefits, okay, okay. There is one more benefit, uh, you know, okay, uh, it is mentioned. Okay, so there are few types of uh, you know cloud. You know we are having um, private cloud. Okay, we are having uh, public cloud. And we are having hybrid cloud. You know okay. And as for this point, okay, so whatever resource, uh, you know, I want, you know, to move it to the cloud, you know, okay, so I can move, you know, and whichever resource due to, you know, okay, uh, some kind of a compliance issue, you know, okay, some kind of, uh, you know, weird, you know, uh, you know, policies, you know, okay, so you cannot move your resource, you know, to the public cloud, you know, okay. So that's not a problem. So whatever resource you are moving, you know, on the you know public cloud, okay, so that you can run on the public cloud, you can take a benefit of a you know that uh, you know okay uh, cloud for that resource, okay, and you can interact with the on-premise resource, okay. So which you are maybe having you know running somewhere you know uh, in the on-premise, which you cannot uh, move uh, you know due to compliance reason. You know, okay, uh, to the cloud. You know, so you are having the capability of you know running the workload on the public cloud as well as running the you know workload on the you know uh, uh, maybe on the data center, and those can of course go and communicate uh, to each other.
ओके देन यू नो ओके तो व्हाट कुड बी द यू नो एप्लीकेशन मॉडर्नाइजेशन ट्रिगर यू नो ओके सो you know so these are some of the trigger but there could be many more you know trigger and okay uh, that could you know okay uh, make you think you know this is the time to modernize our application okay so one of the trigger could be you know scaling our web app and infrastructure you know okay okay so it is it is not an easy task you know to scaling uh, you know okay our infrastructure you know, uh, if you are running that infrastructure you know on on premise okay if i am uh, you know okay i'll just discuss that same point if i am you know okay thought of the you know uh, worst scenario and i have created a you know very superb you know okay servers okay so that scenario also your resources your server will be under utilized most of the time of the year you know okay so so you need you know the elasticity you know so whenever you know your load goes up you know i want to you know have a bigger server or i want to have a multiple instances which can handle that load whenever there is a less load you know okay i want to decrease the number of instances or i want to make uh, you know okay the smaller server you know so that elasticity you know okay is going to afford by the cloud okay so to benefit it you know to take the benefit of that elasticity you know you should you know migrate your application or you know you should think of you know modernizing your application you know, to the cloud okay So we already discuss, you know, okay, uh, cost optimization, you know, okay. So if I do not want to spend uh, upfront cost, I don't want to spend a lot of capital expenditure, you know. Okay. So I can just go and make use of a cloud. You know? Okay. So if I use a cloud, uh, I don't have to uh, pay the upfront cost, you know? but I have to bear a uh, operational cost on. Uh, whatever be the monthly basis okay uh to time to the market or you know okay uh, it will be lesser you know okay if i just go and choose uh, you know okay uh, the cloud you know because uh, uh, if you want uh, a resource you know okay so that resource you can go and create it uh, you know with no time okay in the cloud but that resource if you want to set up at on premises there will be a lot of challenges you, know, you need to okay uh, you know, uh, can you just uh, go on a mute please because somebody somebody is on unmute thank you okay you know, so faster time to market means what you know so for example um uh, so you need to you know uh, maybe uh, create one resource you know let's like suppose say i want to create uh, you know okay one database okay or i need to you know okay um uh, set up one server you know okay set up one virtual machine you know okay so that setting up the you know okay resources whatever resources you know on the cloud you know okay can be done very fast very easily okay but that you compare with the you know okay uh, with the on premise you know okay if you want to procure any uh, you know uh, you know hardware okay so it can take you know the weeks or even it could takes a month also you know okay and uh, you know okay uh, after that you know okay you are losing out uh, you know that benefit of you know uh, staying ahead of the competition okay so you know okay so you can take uh, you know the changes you can take uh, you know what innovation to the market you know okay uh, with uh, you know with faster okay 
with the help of a cloud. Okay. And your team can focus on innovation. Okay. So if these things are you know handled by the you know okay cloud, your team can focus on okay the innovation. Okay. So that is the benefit uh, you know okay you are getting uh, you know, from the cloud. The modernizing our application to the cloud. Okay. So uh, do you want to discuss anything? Do you have any point to discuss till here? Or do you have anything, you know, suggestion? You have, you know, if you experience something similar. You want to take, you know, make any point? Just please. Okay. Uh, so, Amy. So we already discussed this, uh, you know, okay. So if I uh, created the application in an on-premise environment, you know, uh, by using uh, legacy frameworks and tools, okay. So most of the, you know, okay, application fits into the monolith structure, you know, so which offers Little scalability, but no elasticity. Right? Okay. And elasticity uh, is, uh, you know, okay, is related to the, you know, okay, scalability only, but uh, uh, you want to scale dynamically, you know, so you cannot scale dynamically. Okay. So, what, what I mean by that, you know, so for example, let's suppose say uh, you are having. So you are having um, a resource. Okay, resource that means uh, you know, okay, that resource could be uh, what uh, your virtual machine. That resource could be your application, the application. You know, okay. Just think of you are using a resource. You know, so, so as I said earlier, also, so there are few number of users, few number of clients who are accessing this as of now. But okay, during a year, you know, there is uh, no okay. Uh, maybe sometime you will get uh, you know more number of requests, more number of simultaneous requests, you know, okay, or many number of simultaneous requests. So that many number of requests which are coming from the user, you know, okay. So of course this will have some capacity, you know, okay. So you know, okay. I cannot handle or this machine cannot handle, you know, so that incoming loads, you know, okay. So this machine's utilization will go high, okay. And, you know, on the cloud, we can define a rule, you know, so let's suppose say, you know, so if the utilization of this machine, the CPU utilization of this machine goes beyond 70%, you know, okay, then, you know, okay, make, this machine bigger. Okay. Okay, that is called as scale up. You know, so scaling, scaling has you know two type. Vertical scaling or horizontal scaling. Okay, so vertical scaling has, you know, okay, two types scaling in and scaling, sorry, or scaling up and scaling down. So you are having vertical scaling, scaling up and scaling down. Okay, 
and horizontal scaling you are having scaling in and scaling out so over here we are having uh, scaling out and scaling in you know okay so making this resource bigger you know okay is called as scaling up okay and that scaling up you know okay so you do not have to go and sit uh, all the time and you have to monitor the you know how much percentage of a cpu is going and you know okay so we can define the rule you know okay so whenever you know okay that rule will be running constantly you know okay so whenever that cpu utilization goes beyond 70% maybe for consistently for maybe you know okay uh, for maybe half an hour or maybe 15 minutes you know okay then you know okay make a bigger system okay then scale up okay so this scaling dynamically is called as elasticity you know okay so like you can scale up dynamically you can scale down also dynamically you know if there is less load you know okay so if your cpu utilization goes you know, beyond uh, you know or uh, you know uh, below 25 percent okay so you can go up, you know, okay, scale down this. Okay, so like that, you can go and, you know, decide to scale out, you know. So scaling out means what, you know, okay, I do not want to make this machine bigger, you know, okay. So I want to make a one more instance of this machine. Okay, so, you know, there will be more than, you know, okay, one instance, you know, and you know, here, you know, okay, uh, you will have a load balancer which will be also will be provided by the you know, okay, Azure to you, you know, which will be distributing your load, you know, equal on this machines, okay. So, though the scalability you can perform, you know, okay, in the uh, on premise also. Okay, but you cannot uh, perform the elasticity okay. and scalability is also very difficult in, in okay on premise. Okay, so we'll go ahead. So we already discussed, you know, okay, what are the you know. Okay. Problems of uh, monolith. So we already said, uh, you know, okay. So it's difficult to you know, maintain or upgrade whatever be the uh, you know change request which is coming. You know, okay, incorporating that change request is not the easy task. You know, okay. There will be a too high downtime. You know, okay. Uh, for every uh, fix or for every you know, upgrade that is happening. Okay, and um, architecture is too rigid uh, you know, to to make uh, you know okay the changes. Okay, so we'll come back to this uh, you know, diagram. Okay, then we'll discuss this. Uh... Then, uh, why to modernize you know, your application? So, the reason, you know, okay, the first reason I have told you, you know, to take the benefit of a cloud, you know. Uh, you should you know uh, migrate or you should modernize your application okay then other reason there could be you know many reason okay other reasons could be okay uh, because um, changes you know okay uh, you know uh, requires a continuous adaption so whatever be the changes which are happening you know inside the application you know, those changes need to be built, you know, okay, very rapidly, and uh, those changes need to be, you know, okay, uh, go live, you know, uh, 
you know, without affecting, you know, okay, the other modules, you know, okay. So, changes and uncertainty, you know, okay, is the constant of today's uh, business world. Okay. So, application modernization can free your resources, you know, okay, for the innovation. Okay. So now, what is application, you know, okay, modernization, you know, there are actually, you know, a couple of uh, you know, phases or a couple of, uh, uh, yeah, you can say, uh, patterns we are having. You know? So we'll discuss those, you know, okay, uh, those patterns, for example, we are having a rebuild, you know, okay, we are having a refactor, you know, then we are having a re-architect, you know, okay. So we'll discuss those, you know, in the next slides, you know, okay. But, you know, typically, you know, when you go and look uh, for application modernization, uh, so you can think of, you know, uh, this. Now I'll, I'll just uh, uh, see one diagram. Mm -hmm. Find that diagram right now. Okay. But, uh, you know, you can think of, you know, um, uh, application, you know, okay, whatever application traditionally, okay, I will go and uh, create it you know, in the uh, monolith application like this, where all the modules will be included, you know, within the you know, one single application var file, you no, know, or one single application jar file, you no. Know, okay. So rather than you know, okay, making all these, you know, okay, modules, okay, into one single application, okay, and making all these, you know, okay, module. To be a part of one single var file that is a deployable file you know this could be a var file this could be a zip file you know this could be you know uh, your um, er file okay so i'm just having one var file one zip file okay so now if you are making the changes into you know okay uh maybe uh, inside your catalog you know okay so, so incorporating those changes, you know, okay, and uh, having those changes live, you know, okay, you know, we'll have to take this application down for at least for, you know, few seconds or few minutes, you know, okay. So, I'm doing the changes inside one, you know, okay, but, you know, unnecessarily, you know, I'm, you know, uh, making all of my services down for some, some, some period, okay. So, because this kind of uh, architecture, if you look at, you know, okay. So, since my entire application is, you know, present inside one, you know, one file, you know, my application, you know, uh, okay, has to bear that, uh, you know, downtime. You know, if uh, anything has, you know, change, any small change occur, you know, on uh, any one of the module, you know, okay, then application has to bear the downtime. Okay, at least for you know few seconds or few minutes, you know, my entire application will go down. Okay, but if you now go and create you know this every module you know as a separate service, okay, and maybe you know okay separate services you know okay interacting with the database you know okay that uh, that is having a you know separate database also okay and and for example, now, you know, okay, you are, you know, catalog service needs some maintenance, you know, needs some modification, needs some upgrades, you know, okay. So I can go and, you know, okay, work rest of my application, you know, okay, will work, you know, just like that, okay. Only thing, there will be a cup, you know, a downtime, okay, whatever be the said uh, downtime, you know, okay, you will be having the downtime of this uh, particular service, okay. So, making your application on the cloud you know okay 
So this kind of application, okay, if you are having, okay, so that, no, okay, that, uh, that are, you know, very, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, that is, uh, that is very famous now this, you know, creating a microservice, you know, architecture. Okay. But, uh, you know, uh, I'll counter on that point also, you know, every application do not require this architecture. So you have to think, you know, okay, pros and cons, you know, okay, of your application, you know, okay, otherwise, okay, making this application, you know, will, you know, uh, make your life difficult, you know, okay. So first of all, creating this, this kind of application will require some kind of a time and effort, okay. And if you are having this already, you know, okay, this application, okay. Uh, maybe in future also, in near future also, it's uh, you know okay, it's going to remain like that only. There is no going to be a you know okay major upgrades in that application. Okay, then you can think of you know okay, you know okay, lifting this application from the on premise and shifting that application to the cloud. You can you know okay, lift and shift this application you know from the on premise to the cloud. You know. But, you know, you have the application, you know, or you're creating an application newly, you know, okay. So, which in the future, you know, also going to be, you know, change as for the business uh, changes, you know, future also, you know, I need to be change those applications, okay. For my business, you know, okay, this application is very critical, you know, okay. So, then I can just go and, you know, okay, think of to re-architect. Whatever be the application I'm having currently, I'm using, I can think of re-architecting that application into the microservices. Okay. So re-architect and you know, okay, uh, deploy. Okay. So we are having just two, two dots steps. So we are having, okay. so these uh, you know, three paths uh, which they have given uh, in the, in the, you know, uh, planning your, uh, you know, uh, what do you say, planning your uh, modernization, you know, okay. Uh, they are categorized into uh, reinforced, refactor, and reconnect, you know, okay. So there is one more, uh, 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 one more point they have included, uh, you know, okay, Re re-architect with server this, you know, I have not included that. So for example, uh, you know, so I'll just explain, okay, so this about re-hosting, you know? so for that, you know, on the Microsoft documentation, it was nice, you know, okay. One article, one article is there on that Microsoft documentation. I'll just explain that article. You can see this. So re-hosting an on-premise application on the Azure, you know, okay, Azure VM, okay, and this article you know, um, has considered that, you know, okay, so that uh, we are using a two-tier you know, application, okay, which is having a, uh, you know, uh, Presentation tier and database tier. Okay. And uh, they're using a .NET application. Okay. And that uh, name of the application is a uh, smart hotel. You know, it's very famous application. Okay. So you can find uh, okay, that GitHub location of this smart hotel. This is the GitHub URL. Okay. So 
okay you are running for example this smart hotel okay uh, smart hotel 360 application on uh, on premise okay and you know okay now you know okay you are thinking of this application to take uh, you know into the cloud okay but i don't want to make uh, you know any kind of a change inside the application i don't want to make any kind of a, you know drastic change into the application i don't want to rearchitect uh, you know okay my application okay so in such cases you know, okay so you can think of the option of rehosting you know so rehosting means what whatever be the application which you are having which is running on you know okay uh, on premise okay so lifting that on premise application and you know okay just shifting it to the you know cloud you know so to take the benefit of the cloud okay so you can think of okay this so for example currently that smart hotel 360 you know is running on you know okay uh, on premise data center You know, okay, which uh, on premise they are having uh, the concept of virtualization also. They are having two VM, okay, uh, the web VM and SQL VM, okay, and uh, you know, okay. So these both of these, you know, okay, I will be you know taking over here, okay. If I am lifting and shifting the application, okay, to the cloud, okay. So of course. Uh, i will be proposing you know this solution you know to you so if this is your on premise you know okay workload you know then i will just go and create okay in any one of the region you know okay which is suitable for me i will just go and create you know okay virtual network you know so virtual network it just like uh, you are you know running uh, you know your on premise network okay so the network which is uh, you know uh, created uh, you know virtually it is called as virtual network vnet you know under vnet you know i may go and create a different kind of a subnet you know okay so under vnet i will just go and create you know okay different subnet so that i can assign the private ips you know okay and in one subnet i will just go and you know place my you know windows Uh, sorry a uh, web vm so of course i'll have to create this web vm you know okay i have to create this sql vm okay so if i'm just creating this web vm okay so i'll have to take care of uh, all the installation of the software you know so whatever be the software you know okay i'm running on you know on premise i can just go and run the software you know okay over here you know okay so i don't have to pay extra cost of licensing you know? okay so i can you know take that benefit of uh, using that uh, you know existing license you know okay and uh, you know creating the you know virtual machine creating the databases creating the you know uh, web servers okay so so if your application do not need you know any kind of a drastic changes you know okay so then you can think of you know lifting and shifting the application from you know okay on premise to the you know okay uh, to the cloud okay so so over here uh you can think of you can read this so deploy your existing application as it is you know okay uh, within the virtual machine which are running on the you know cloud you know which could be on the public cloud or which could be on a hybrid if you want to you know okay if you have some workload that you want to keep it on a public cloud you know okay and some workload you want to run it on a data 
data data centers you know your uh, private data centers you know okay so you can have that kind of a scenario on ship okay okay so if your application in the future okay uh, will not change our future there is in the near future there is uh, no scope of uh, changing the application or you know changing um, uh, uh, from the monolithic application to the microservice application you no know, okay uh, rather than getting a benefit you know okay i will get a fewer benefit but you know okay i will have to you know uh, spend extra time you know and uh, you know okay there is going to be a trade off uh, between uh, you know okay uh, the 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 required skill you know i'll i'll have to hire you know the uh, skilled people you know okay and i have to you know create that application so that will take additional cost you know okay so if as a company you want don't want to spend on to that you know okay you can simply you know go, go and lift and shift your application you know okay on the cloud and you can take a benefit of a cloud Okay. Uh, then next thing, uh, I'm having a re-platform. You know. Okay. Uh, or uh, we are having something called as refactor. You know. Okay. Okay. So this is your re-platform or refactor. So, for example, you are running, you know, okay. Uh, for example, your monolithic application, or if you are having, you know, your um, microservice application also, okay, okay. But that microservice are uh, you know application you know is currently you know uh, running you know on premise, okay. And you know you want to take a benefit of uh, you know uh, that cloud, which we have discussed, okay. So all those benefit uh, you want to take, you know, okay. Then if your application is monolith application, you know, okay, then either. You know that monolith application. You can take, you can containerize that application. You know, okay. So for container containerizing this application, you need you know some kind of a changes. You know, okay, within the application, but that won't be a you know a drastic changes. You know, you know as if uh, you are you know uh, re-architecting you know the monolithic uh, to the you know uh, the microservice. So that kind of a change you don't uh, need. So you need you know some changes if you are having a monolith application, okay. And if you are containerizing that application, so that you can take a benefit of uh, you know okay that cloud, okay. You can take a benefit of uh, you know those containers, okay. And okay, uh, you can deploy this on the you know okay. The cloud. So there is a service called as a, you know, okay. Uh, if I talk about Azure, there is service called as Azure Container Registry. You know, so I can deploy once the container is created. I can deploy, you know, okay, that container in ACR, Azure Container Registry. And there is one more service called as Azure Container Instance. Okay. So for running or testing the you know, okay container, okay, I can just make use of that as your container instance. You know, so in this re-platform or refactor, you know, you need you know okay to modify the application, some part of the application. You know, so for example, you need you know Docker Compose file or Docker uh, files. You know, okay. And uh, you know, we'll have to go and deploy that. Okay, 
of course if you are making a database you know okay then you'll have to create you know, okay a database also and third you know we are having third option we are having uh, uh, the refactor or you can say we have not uh, we have changed this so re-architect this heading should be applicable for you so this is you know can be your re-architect okay so this will okay We'll have to do it very carefully. You know? Okay. If you are okay, very sure so this application is very, very important for you know uh, our uh, you know organization to to take it into the future, you know. Okay, then we'll have to take a benefit of uh, you know uh, microservice architecture as well as uh, by using some kind of a mic, you know, okay. Uh, so you know, cloud benefit i want to take it you know, okay then in the re architecturing you know okay we'll have to go and you know refactor this application entirely you know okay we'll have to identify a component which we can segregate you know and we'll have to create you know okay every component as a service and then you know every service will be interacting with each other okay and you know, there would be you know okay um preferably you know more databases also okay so first you'll have to re-architect you know your application to uh, as a microservice architecture application and then you know you'll have to Okay, deploy that. You know, okay, within uh, you know, okay, the cloud like this. Getting it? So, uh, do you have any kind of a questions query on this? No. So then, uh, you know, already discussed this slides. You know, what, whatever be the benefit of this, but let's discuss. You know, okay, the key uh, uh, technologies for the modernization. So uh, you should use a modern development framework. Okay. Okay, so whatever be the latest you know, uh, technology trained, you should go and um, adapt those. Uh, making a cloud native applications or microservice uh, application is going to uh, help you, uh, you know, to take that application onto the cloud. Okay, making use of a hybrid cloud platform, you know, okay. So whatever be the workload, uh, you know, okay. You want to keep it uh, on the you know, your uh, data center, okay. And whatever be the workload, you want to keep it on the um, public cloud. You can you know, okay, keep it and you can communicate, okay. Then uh, you know, okay, the DevOps, you know, um, it is the integral part, uh, okay. Now nowadays it has become okay. so DevOps, okay, it has become okay, very very crucial. And nowadays, people are you know using DevOps. You know, okay, a lot of uh, companies are using DevOps along with the agile processes. Okay. So, you know, whatever be the projects which are developed, you know, okay, they are following you know agile processes and they are using you know, DevOps, you know, okay, for uh, you know, continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment. Okay, and uh, And finally, 
I want to show you. So this diagram, you can think of this diagram. Okay. Okay. So if you are you know starting. Okay, and you want to you know okay um you want you have already you know the application and you want to you know okay migrate that application to the cloud okay so then if you are you no know, do not wish to make any kind of a changes you know okay so then you can have an option of lifting and shifting that application you see okay so if you come over here if you're already having that application which you like to migrate on the cloud you know okay and uh, which you are might not be having uh, you know okay already you know okay cloud okay and then you, know, you do not want to containerize okay then um, okay um so your application uh, you know okay is this kind of a package application you do not want to package that application you know? okay so then you know if you do not want to package that application you can you know run it on the you know okay uh, the uh, that entire code you can uh, you know deploy on the virtual machine okay and you can you know uh, work from that virtual machine okay but normally you know if you on if you are having a code you know okay and uh, that uh, that is having a deployable file you know okay and that deployable file you want to upload or you want to deploy it you know okay then you can choose you know one of the options you know, either app service or you know okay spring you know, azure spring app. okay so so if you are java developer you know okay we are having either these options so do not think of always you know okay this azure spring apps you know okay so if you are using a normal uh, you know application normal spring mvc application also you know okay that also can be you know okay deployed on the uh, you know azure spring uh, sorry uh, Azure App Service, you know, because you know this Azure Spring app is uh, having a lot of benefit, you know, and which is uh, optimized for especially for using uh, Spring Boot applications. You know, okay, where you are having a different microservices created in the Spring Boot, you know, okay, then you should use this uh, Spring Azure Spring app. But if you are having a normal Java application, JSP servlet application, or you know, for that matter, a Spring MVC application, you know, okay, then there is no need, you know, okay, to use Azure Spring app because you you will be landing up, you know, okay, spending extra cost, you know, so then your work can be managed, you know, by using Azure, you know, app service also, okay. Okay, now if you're building, you know, okay, uh, the new application, okay, and um, if you're building a new application, and if you need, you know, the complete control, you know, on that application, okay, then it is better choice for you to go and make use of, uh, you know, your own virtual machine. You can go and have complete control as in what Con complete control means what um, uh, I want to, you know, okay, just install that uh, whatever be the you know, specific software, uh, you know, okay, uh, I will be running. So I want to install that specific software, okay, um, on top of this virtual machine, you know, okay, maybe this virtual machine is, can be Windows or Linux virtual machine, 
on top of that i'll be you know okay, installing any you know specific uh, you know software and then on top of that i'll be deploying my application you know okay but usually if you just look at these no you know okay so these are the past services you know? okay so these are the past services in the past service you know okay um under the hood you know okay the virtual machine will be created but virtual machine will be created by the you know uh, the platform itself the azure itself okay so on that you know okay i will be running app service you know and app service you know uh, is uh, will be using some kind of a some kind of a middleware some some kind of a, you know software you know so app service is created for dotnet application or app services is created for a java application that we need to choose at the time of creating that app service okay and and that kind of application i can just go and deploy you know? okay but that installing that app you know okay and installing that app service installing that software on that app service it's not my responsibility that control i'm not getting okay so that installation of that required software will be done by you know okay the platform itself okay but if you want that complete control you know no i want everything you know okay then you can just go and make use of you know okay virtual machine and whatever be the software you know you want to install you can just install it on that okay okay but you know you will have to take care of you know okay that uh, uh, you know scalability okay that elasticity okay then okay you will you will have to just uh, you know okay uh, do additional work for you know making uh, use of those scalability elasticity okay but reason if you are using these you know uh, past services for example uh, you know azure spring app or you know okay azure Uh, app service to to deploy my application okay to deploy my dotnet application or uh, you know uh, java application or any other application okay, okay. so that uh, scalability you know i don't have to you know uh, uh, take much effort you know so i can just go and create a rule within this you know okay and uh, you know okay uh, the the multiple instances will be created so underline the plan you know or underline you know the compute resources will be you know okay uh, scale out or will be that many instances will be created so depending on your requirement you know okay you can go and choose you know okay one of these service you know okay so there are many services you know, okay you know, which are there okay so which will you know okay suit as per your requirement so you know, as of now i have discussed okay so based on your requirement you can just go and choose you know okay that services you know so for example you know uh, if you are building a new if you do not want to install all that software by yourself then you can come over here you know okay uh, if you do not have that uh, workload many uh, you know okay workload many uh, batch processes to execute okay then you can go and come to the next if you are running spring boot application no i am not running a spring boot application you no know? okay so if you are running a spring boot application you can go and choose this otherwise you can come over here you no know? if you are you know uh, running serverless code you know okay uh, which is going to be you know a very small code which will be a short lived code you no know? then you can choose you know azure function otherwise you know okay you can choose okay the managed web hosting platform feature you know okay so whatever be the you know okay hosting of the application you know okay you do not want to you know take care of that hosting of the application then in that case you can go for a you know okay uh, azure app service you know no matter if you are using a java or dot net you know, okay it will support uh, you know all uh kind of a uh, technologies uh, which is major one okay and um 
that manage weight loss thing, you know, actually do not want to, you know, make use, you know, okay, then you can go and come to this. Okay. So if you, um, if you want to containerize, you know, okay, but uh, you do not want to, you know, okay, orchestrate, you know, okay. So then you can go and make use of Azure container instance. Okay. So which will run, you know, okay, uh, your application. Okay. So, but if you want to containerize, you know, okay, then, uh, sorry, uh, if you want to containerize and you want to make use of orchestration also, you know, okay, then you can use, you know, Azure Kubernetes service. Okay. Okay. So all these are services, you know, okay, which will help you ultimately, you know, okay, either to migrate your application or to modernize your application. You know? You know? So I am thinking in this way, migrating an application means what? Simply lifting the application which is running on premise. You know? Okay. And to take a benefit of a cloud, you know, I'm shifting that entire application to the cloud. So that is that scenario is lifting and shifting is migrating an application. And what 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 do I call as modernizing? You know, okay. So modernizing means you know I'm making some kind of a changes in my application, okay, to be future proof, okay. And I'm ultimately going and deploying that, uh, you know, okay, on the you know, cloud by using, you know, agile process and by using, you know, DevOps. Okay. So, you know, okay, here in this case, uh, maybe refactor will appear in this, uh, you know, modernizing or, you know, your re-architect, okay, will appear in the, you know, okay, modernization. Okay. So, so these are the point you know you should think of you know when you you know modernize your application. Okay, and uh, you know, that's it. Uh, you know. So plan your application you know modernization journey. Okay, so uh, identify you know um, determine. Uh, Determine technical and operational risk, you know, associated with, uh, you know, migrating each application. Okay. It's current platform to the new, you know, platform. So identify that. Okay. Because, uh, okay, there might be, you know, okay, some uncertainty, some problem, you know, okay, uh, will occur, you know, okay, so that anticipating those problems or those you know okay uh, challenges okay uh, well before you know okay uh, those of course you know that is you know always a good okay so identify you know whether what can be a challenge you know okay in the modernization you know okay and first of all you should be you know okay agreed you know okay in the modernizing your application okay your you know uh, company might be agreeing with the organization uh, maybe organizing your application okay and then identify what could be the challenges do you want to really modernize your application to take all these benefits you know okay if you want you know okay then you can plan that way okay so after identifying those you know okay then evaluate, you know, okay. So evaluate means what? Evaluate the cost, you know, the benefits and concerns associated with, uh, you know, okay, potential, you know, modernization path, you know, okay. So you, you have to evaluate which path will be fitted, you know, will be best fitted uh, for my application, okay. So, so that we'll, we'll have to just go and, you know, okay, evaluate, okay. Then next is, uh, the validate next is validate uh after sorry uh, next is uh choose you know choose means what select the you know okay uh, the appropriate uh, uh, the modernization path 
you know which is best suited for your you know uh, application best suited for your budget you know okay. so whether you want to do uh, that kind of an investment or not you know okay. and then okay last point is to validate after you know each migration validate your application whether it is you know uh, delivering that you know uh, you know benefit uh, to your application okay and uh, you know okay as for the you know requirement whether it is uh, you know uh, fulfilling all all those uh, you know, business requirement okay so so these are the things okay and uh, you know that's it uh, from my side guys and i'll just you know end this session with this question you know, is the microservice architecture is right for your application just you'll have to answer you know, to yourself only okay so some will find you know okay this is right absolutely right you know okay so some will find you know there there are you know rather than getting a benefit uh, you know okay you know uh, i will okay get more trade off okay so that's it guys from my side so thank you do you have any kind of a query question Yeah, Samita, uh, I've just uh, finished from my side. You want to say something? Yes, sir. Um, I have shared the feedback form in the chat box. So please uh, fill and submit the form before you leave the webinar. And once you submit, please mention done in the chat box. And if you have any queries, you can write down in the chat box.
Thank you, Makran sir, and thank you everyone for joining this webinar. If it doesn't have any queries, uh, you can leave the chat. You can leave the webinar.